So that's an island. And that's where I plan on doing my in the bag. So there's a few things I need in order for this to work. A kayak. My bag. Some straps. So this probably isn't the most smartest thing, but in order for me to bring this, I'm gonna need another kayak. We're still renovating, by the way. All right, so now I gotta load all of that into the truck and we should be good. doing up here so there's the island i was wanting to throw a disc at it but uh it's 600 feet away so it's a little farther than i thought probably could have found an easier way of doing that but so we got the basket locked on we're tied up and there's my boat and we have takeoff that was a lot harder than i expected but we are off now to paddle 600 feet 600 feet is pretty far, um, but look at this view. Land. Okay, surely there's no like animals or any ugly creatures out here. And by the way, there's 12,000 of you guys who keep returning to the channel. Just sub. Okay, I want to do a little bit of exploring. I've never actually been out here before, so let's see if they got like a nine hole course out here or something. Lots of trees. What if somebody steals my kayak and I'm stuck here for forever? I'm not sure if you guys saw my last video, but I don't have the best track record walking across bridges. A limited edition Pepsi can. Dude, this might be where they shot the Blair Witch Project. All right, so that's not a good sign. There's people here. Dude, what is this? Is this like a campsite or something? Dude. Dude, if there's a body under here. Oh, wait. Oh, those are just my shoes. Hey, but uh, if you guys want a free tent, it's out here on the island. I was about to show that I found a turtle shell and then a freaking rabbit comes flying out of this hole. Bro, I wish I had the camera going because I squealed like a girl. How is there even any rabbits out here? Because this island is not that big and I haven't seen a single carrot. What in the world? Dude, did a meteor hit this island? What the? Oh my gosh, there's barbed wire. I can already feel the radiation poisoning. Hey, but for real, what causes a, what causes a big old hole like this? How much does an island cost? Cause I might buy it if it's like 20 bucks. Dude, they have oysters out here. Okay, all right, it's time to do the in the bag. Now that my putters are no longer being held hostage by USPS, we can finally do an in the bag and we might as well start with the putters. So, 350 G PA threes. I love me a nice matching set of putters. This will be my third year putting with PA threes. They feel fantastic in the hand. Solid from inside 15 feet. I've been having great results putting with PA3, so there's really no sense in changing it. If it's not broke, don't fix it. All right, so now moving on to the approach disc slash throwing putters. I have another 350 GPA3. This is my last year's putting putter. Super flippy, just nice approach shots. Heiser flips in the woods is all I really use this for. To complement that understability, I have an overstable Disc Mania Flex 1 P2. Just a nice overstable putter that I can use for up shots when I don't want much ground play. It just hits and sticks. For my off the tee putters, I have two Proton Envies. This Proton is now gonna be in the bag for two years. This is a pretty straight flying Envy now. 
when there's wind at play, I'll bump up to this new Proton Envy I got. This one still has the stability, can handle the wind a lot better, put it on some hyzer, flip up to flatten the headwind. Just a nice disc to complement my beat up Envy. To finish off the approach discs, I have a brand new 500 A2 by Prodigy. The A2 is an approach disc that I've used pretty much my entire time I've been playing disc golf. This is a very overstable disc that I use pretty much for any shot inside 250 feet. I know exactly what this disc is gonna do. It feels solid for a forehand. It feels fantastic for a backhand. The brand new A2 though, because the one that I've had in my bag for four years is chilling in Washington. So that's pretty unfortunate, but on to the mid ranges. I don't bag that many mid ranges. I'm not a big mid range guy, but from stable to most stable, we have the Star Mako 3. You guys know that I love this disc. This is a straight flying mid range, some turn and not a lot of fade. Great for hyzer flips in the woods. Mako 3 is hands down my favorite mid-range. From there we have a 500 Prodigy MX3. I think this is now tied for the longest disc in the bag. This is pretty beat in. It flies pretty similar to the Mako 3 except it has more of a finish at the end. If there's a little bit of headwind involved, I will bump up from the Mako 3 to throw this for a nice straight shot. And then if there's a lot of headwind, I will go straight to the Ceylon MD4. This is a Lazat bar stamp. Very flat, very overstable. I can throw this as hard as I want flat and it's not really turning over for me and it's having that very dependable finish at the end. Love me some overstable mid ranges. There's a helicopter. Again, from stable to most stable, I bag the Nate Perkins Signature Series Meta Essence. Very nice hyzer flip disc that I use for wooded shots. Very good for shots that require a turnover the whole way. From there, we have the special edition Meta Instinct. I use this disc a lot. Any shot from about 330 to 380, I'm going straight to this disc. Uh, I can punch this hard and flat, and it'll just go straight for about 300 feet and then finally start to hook up at the end. It also fits very comfortable in my hand. This is strictly backhand. I do not forehand this. Just a very nice seven speed fairway. To a new disc that's in the bag this year, this is a C-Line FD. It's an X out with this super dope glitch stamp. This is very similar to my instinct. However, it goes a little bit more straight and doesn't have as much of a finish. This is also brand new. So I know this is gonna beat into a nice straight flying disc. It'll be between my instinct and my essence. I can get a lot of use for a disc like this. Now onto my most favorite fairway drivers. I have two 500 FX2s. This no longer flies like an FX2. This is just my get out of jail free card. I use this for forehand rollers, um, flex shots, tomahawks. This thing has hit a lot of trees. You have a newer 750FX2. I typically only use this for backhands, anywhere from inside of 330 to 370. Very overstable, I'll get a skip at the end. I might use this for forehands to have a little bit of flip up and carry straight, but like I said, mostly for the backhands. There we have the Calvin Heinberg Draco. This is my most overstable fairway. This is strictly forehands and forehands only. Very flat, very overstable, very trustworthy. And then last but not least, I just added this to the bag. This is a Quantum Orion. This flies very similar to my FD slash Instinct, but I have about 30 more feet on this. I'll use this for 400 to 430 feet. Believe it or not, I bought this thing out of a vending machine and the second it was in my hand, I loved it. Again, from least stable to most stable, we have the Kona Penis Emperor. If I step up to a shot that has max distance and no consequences of OB, this is my go-to driver. This is just a bomber disc, hands down the farthest flying disc I've ever thrown. From there, a little bit more stable, I have the Cloudbreaker. I'll use this for shots where I need a little bit more control. If I don't want it to whole turn the whole way, I'll go for this. Nice driver, added it to the bag this season. So from there, I have a bottom stamp destroyer. I honestly don't care about this disc, which is why it's in the bag. I use this for water carry shots or just dangerous shots where if I'm gonna lose a disc, I'd rather lose this one than any other disc in my bag. For whatever reason, I like having discs that I only backhand and discs that I only forehand. This is one of them that I only forehand. This is an S-Line DD3. Throw a nice flex line with this, and I can also throw it on pure hyzer and just hold hyzer the whole way. I started off as an only forehand player and then have slowly became a pretty dominant backhand player. So I'm gonna have to get back into the forehand game because I feel like I'm losing it. No! Whew. From the S-Line DD3, we go into the newer C-Line DD3s. This red one is forehand only. It's more overstable than that S-Line. It doesn't have much turn to it. I can just mash it flat, it goes straight, and then has a very nice hook at the end. Same with this blue DD3. This is for backhands only. If I do not release it flat, then it's just gonna hyzer out immediately. I'll use this for some headwind shots or 
shots where I still want some distance, but I want to guarantee that I will not go right, whether it be OB, water, whatever, I'm going for this one. To round off the discs, I have a Calvin Heimberg Halo Destroyer, signed by Calvin Heimberg himself. This is the most overstable disc in the bag. This is strictly for super windy days. I'll forehand and backhand this. This is a very good windy disc. As far as the bag, this is my third year with the grip. I keep all my performance enhancing drugs in one pocket, my towels and range finder in the other. And that's why in the bag. All right, let's play some disc golf. We're making history over here on the channel because I guarantee you I'm the only person to play disc golf on this island. Which, by the way, does that technically mean that every hole is an island hole? Just think about it. 100 feet, let's go. You mother. So this next shot is 200 feet straight through the woods, up a little hill, and the basket's underneath two trees making an A, which stands for A. Don't forget to sub. Yeah, that's still a putt. My phone's about to die and I gotta get off this island. Hey.